Watercolor isn't typically used to paint intricate details, but if you must, here are a few tips that might help you. As you can see, this painting is already in progress. Check out my previous video if you missed it for a few tips on how to start a painting and bring it to this point. Jumping right in, tip one, paint in layers. This might seem like a very basic statement, but there are a lot of advanced tutorials out there that recommend painting each area once to keep your watercolors as fresh looking as possible. Yes, that's true. If you paint an area just once without painting layers on top of it, it will look very watercolory and fresh. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of pressure to know that you only have one chance to get each part of the painting right. Let's stick with layers. A key thing to remember is that when in doubt, let your layers completely dry before painting over it with the next layer or before you try to fix a mistake. Tip two, plan your highlight colors. I didn't mention this in the previous video, but the first washes will serve as the highlight color. So you need to plan for them in the beginning. If you're coming to watercolor from oil or acrylic painting, you may be used to the opposite order. In those mediums, you would reserve your highlight and dark accents for the end of the painting. I might make a video in the future explaining the differences between oil painting and watercolor painting. Let me know in the comments if this is something you would be interested in seeing. As you can see, light green was used for the background trees and varying shades of yellow was used for the foreground wash. These will be the highlights. If you want, you can try to leave the white of the paper for your highlights. Check out Oliver Pyle's videos for great tutorials on painting trees. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. You can use masking tape or masking fluid, or you can paint around the shapes during the initial washes. I left the people on the right unpainted because I know I will add dark paint to those areas later on and I didn't want to have paint build up in those areas before painting them with thick paint. Tip three is to paint shapes, not outlines. Now what do I mean by that? Let's zoom into the detail I'm painting on the amusement ride. Imagine you were drawing this with an ink pen. You're probably outlining each shape as you see it in the photo. Even with the smallest watercolor brush, that would be very difficult and would not look very good because you would then need to fill in the space between the lines with paint. Trust me when I say this would be a mess. Think about the details as a group of disconnected shapes. As I'm working through the details on the ride, you can see that I'm abstractly painting dabs of color to hint at detail in the canopy. Notice that I'm not connecting every shape during this first pass. It might look incomplete at this stage, but I will continue to paint different layers of colors and shapes until it appears complete. Someone commented in my last video asking how do you decide what to keep and what to delete from a picture. That leads me to tip four. Simplify the details. In the current example, I'm painting from a photo, but when painting from life, this tip is even more important due to potentially limited time frames. Trust me on this one. One of the most powerful moves you can make in a painting is to remove unnecessary detail. Now let's paint the foreground using the steps I just described. First, let's add another background layer to add some depth. This layer will be more saturated than the original background to help create separation. The highlight color on the hedges is already in place, but I decided that the yellow was too yellow, so I added a bright green glaze on top. While the glaze is still wet, I add several medium green values to the hedges to define their forms. I darken the color as I move towards the base. I add hints of shadow and dark accents, but I'm making a conscious effort to not darken this area too much. Notice how the shape of the hedges is defined by the background layers, not outlined as individual shapes. The overall vibe I was going for was bright and sunny. I was not trying to copy the photo or create an accurate representation of the exact colors. The only detail I add to this area are the metal fence pickets, rose-colored stone posts, and large planters in front of the hedges. I add blobs of color to hint at the red rose flower beds and orange dust paths. A few more details to 
tweaks to the background, and people complete this piece. Thanks for watching this far. Hit that like button if this video inspired you to make more art. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss the next video. Don't forget to watch part one of the Canby Lake painting if you missed it.